So iOS 16.1 just released to the entire public, and in this video, what I wanna do is go over every single new feature that Apple added to this iteration of iOS 16.1. So without further ado, let's talk about every single new feature because there are some good ones that are definitely worth noting. Let's get into it. So let's get right into this video, everybody. The first thing that I do wanna show off is the new shared library feature. So if you go into your settings, go into photos, there's now a new section in the photo settings called library and shared library. If you click on that, you actually have the ability to create a shared library. And what that idea is, is exactly what it sounds like. So if you have a shared library open, you can invite participants right here to be included in your shared library via email, via iMessage. So everything that gets uploaded into that shared library will now be viewable and downloadable by the people that are invited in that shared library. One thing to keep in mind about this shared library is that the owner of the shared library, so in that case, it would be me, would be the one taking on all the iCloud storage space. So let's say you have 100 gigs of photos in the shared library that you created, it'll come away from your iCloud library and the other five people or 10 people that it's shared with will only be taking up space with the photos that they personally download. So keep that in mind because that is something that will take up space on your iCloud library relatively quickly. And now there are two ways to actually add that photo into the library. So for instance, right here, we have this cool wallpaper. Let's say I wanna add it into the shared library. I just tap on that. See this little icon with the person? You just tap on that and you can press move to shared library and then it's gonna be moved into that shared library. And then also, if you are in the camera application, you go into the camera and you go to snap a picture, you might be able to see that there's a new little icon on the top left-hand corner. Right now it's crossed through because I have it turned off, but just like any other option in there, I could just tap that, shared library is turned on, so every subsequent photo that I take moving forward will be added to the shared library if that icon is turned on. And then to go back to my normal library, I just click on that right there. So that is a new shared library feature. I think it's great. I think it's also gonna cannibalize a lot of applications that already do this, but now it's built in natively into iOS and every iOS 16.1 and iPadOS 16.1 update moving forward. Another new one, which is actually not new for owners of iPhone 13 Pro Maxes and newer, but if you go into the settings, go into battery, you can actually toggle the battery percentage off and on in the battery icon on the top right hand corner. Now with 16.0, it came to the iPhone 14s and the iPhone 13 Pros but now it actually went all the way down with 16.1, so the iPhone XR, iPhone 11, the iPhone 12, and all the iPhone minis are now able to have this battery percentage right here with iOS 16.1, because at first it didn't come to the minis especially, and people were upset, especially the 13 mini, since it was less than a year old at that point when it first was released. But now, if you do have a 13 mini, by all means, turn on that battery percentage, and you'll be very happy with that. And if you guys did notice in here, there's a new section called battery health and charging that you can tap into, which tells you the maximum battery capacity that you currently have. And then you also have a new toggle called clean energy charging. So this is basically a way to charge your battery and optimize the battery charging at certain times of day to make sure you're not taking up a lot of power from the actual grid itself. So here it says in your region, iPhone will try to reduce your carbon footprint by selectively charging when lower carbon emissions electricity is available. So it's exactly what it sounds like. It just charges when it's more beneficial for the grid. But at the end of the day, your iPhone will be fully charged when you pick it up off of your nightstand. And then one of the newer things that's gonna come is actually live activity. So live activities were actually mentioned in 16.0, but they weren't released. So now in 16.1, third-party developers will be allowed to use live activities. And right now, the best example that we have of live activities natively is by turning on a timer. So if I turn on that timer for five minutes, then I go down here, you can see that we have a live activity right here. Now it looks a little bit different because I am using a 13 Pro Max. If you're using one of the new 14 Pro Maxes or 14 Pros, you'll get that live activity in that dynamic island. So keep that in mind. So natively, there are a couple of applications that work with it, but think about it like this for sports updates, for Uber updates, for Grubhub Eat updates. So it's another way for you to interact with your phone that makes it a little bit easier to see exactly what's going on with relevant data of relevant applications. So if you go into your Face ID settings, you can actually toggle the act live activities off and on right here. So there's a little live activities toggle that you can turn off and on. So if you don't want that on, because it probably will drain a little bit more battery as you move forward, you can turn it off completely, but I'm gonna keep it turned on because I wanna see what it looks like when we do receive these updates once those applications really start going. So keep that in mind. Those are probably gonna to start to roll out very, very soon. The moment you update to 16.1, the App Store will also wanna update a lot of applications to 16.1. The next two features actually in the screenshot, and for iPad owners, you probably know this already, but if you take a screenshot and click into it, and then you press done, normally you only have a few options, but they did add a new option called copy and delete, which I thought was kind of ingenious and something so simple that I didn't know we actually needed until it was actually here. 
It's exactly what it sounds like. So all it does is when you take a screenshot, you can copy and delete it. So it doesn't save to your camera roll. Cause right now, if you want to send it off to somebody, you can send it off from here. But then when you press done, it actually saves to your camera roll. So what you like to do now is just copy and delete. So I copy it, go over to an iMessage. So I copy and delete. And let's say I go over into a notes application and then I paste it. There is a screenshot, but then if I go to my photo library, it is not there at all. So what, that is one of the new features of 16.1, which is that new screenshot. And now a couple more things when it comes to the wallet especially. So if I go into my Apple wallet right now, you can see that I have my daily cash right here, which is one of Apple's new kind of like gift card, like debit card kind of things, which is basically whenever I use my Apple card, I get some new Apple cash based on whatever I purchase, and that is my cash back. But Apple's actually introducing a new savings account which you can now take your Apple Cash and move into a savings account and earn some APY. What the APY number is going to be, I'm not sure, but if it's trying to be competitive in some of these spaces, then expect maybe 1.5 to 2.5%, depending on where Apple's trying to compete with. If they're trying to be the highest APY to get people to store more money in their Apple wallet, then they might do that. But keep that in mind, Apple's bringing out a new savings account if you do want to get even more ingrained into Apple's ecosystem. And then also with the wallet, you actually have the ability to delete the application altogether. So some people from privacy reasons don't like to have the wallet on there. Before you weren't allowed to delete the wallet app at all from iOS or iPadOS. But now if you want to, you can completely remove the wallet app. And then the very last setting is actually inside of Siri and search. You now have the ability to automatically send messages. So I'm going to keep this one toggled off just because I like it when Siri repeats back her messages to me just to make sure it was dictated correctly. But for a lot of people, especially when they're driving and they're using Apple CarPlay, they like to just say, you know, hey blank send xyz this message saying hello meet at 8 30 and they just want it to be sent out so now you can actually get it sent out without siri confirming with you that it sounds correct so you can toggle that off and on it's probably kind of risky because siri isn't amazing at dictation even though she's getting better but just know that that setting is there inside of siri and search just automatically send messages and toggle that on right there and before we get into the battery i did want to mention and put up on the screen right here which iphones will be compatible with ios 16.1 because there is a fair amount of iPhones. So if you do have one of the older iPhones, you should be able to still get 16.1 and get most of these experiences, if not all of them. And the last thing I do wanna talk about is overall battery life. So let's go into battery right here, see what we've been dealing with with overall battery over the last 10 days. And we get about six hours and three minutes of screen on time, about three hours and 40 minutes of screen off time. And let's see on a day, let's see like Wednesday right here where we did charge about 125%. We got about eight hours and 41 minutes. But keep in mind, we're using the camera a lot of the time. We're using a Twitter. I use my iPhone a lot for YouTube, so that's taking up a lot of battery. But at this thing on its own can really get, even with 94% battery and this is a 13 Pro Max, I can easily get eight to 10 hours of battery life on a single charge with this on. And again, I'm not doing much from a battery saving proponent. You know, everything is turned on from, you know, ProMotion is turned on, screen brightness is always to the max. I'm recording a lot of the time, I'm watching YouTube, I'm even editing in LumaFusion a little bit for YouTube Shorts in here. So overall, if I really wanted to, I can definitely get 10 hours of battery life with this 13 Pro Max. But let's finish up this video and get out of here. So that's pretty much gonna do it for this video, everybody. Like you saw, Apple added some much needed benefit features to 16.1 that didn't come with 16.0. So my favorite ones were definitely the shared library and then the nerd in me really likes that optimized clean energy charging, which is that little toggle you can turn on in the battery settings. I just thought that was kind of cool and a nice little add-on. It almost makes me feel like I'm charging a Tesla like in my nightstand because that's the way they charge the Teslas overnight with a smart energy and clean energy charging. But let me know in the comments down below which feature you guys enjoyed the most and which one you're most excited to try out with 16.1 and let me know which phone you're using it with as well. Always curious to know. But if you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so that I know you made it to the end. And also definitely watch our latest video on iPadOS 16.1 because that did also release alongside iOS 16.1 and iPadOS was actually the first iteration of 16.0 that we got on that one. So that is a major update. Definitely check that video out in one of these cards right here. But until next time, I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here. Peace, everybody. That iPad update is definitely worth watching. Check it out.